<clears throat> Good morning. I get to do two things this morning. First, I have the privilege to say to our guests, our families, friends, faculty, staff, and of course, graduates, welcome on behalf of the Board of Trustees. We're delighted you're here. It's a joyous morning and we appreciate you allowing us to, to join with you. The second thing I get to do today is take a few minutes to talk to the graduates, and I will be brief. When Dr. Wyatt first mentioned to me that, that he'd like for me to speak at the winter commencement, I thought to myself, I'm not sure what I have to say that would be helpful or meaningful. So what I did is I turned to one of my advisors, one of my close advisors, and I said, Siri, <laughs> commencement address. And she immediately gave me the Wikipedia page so I would know what a commencement address was. And then gave me a number of opportunities for plagiarism, which wasn't very helpful. So then I thought, well, maybe there's something that I could draw from my commencement back in 1979. I went to a school very similar to, to Coker. And my commencement speaker was the Honorable William Webster which is not exactly a household name. He had been a judge and at the time was the director of the FBI. Now think about it, it's 1979, there's 200 graduates, young people who have grown up in the 60s and the 70s, and somebody thought it would be good to have the director of the FBI come and talk at commencement. And I can assure you, I do not remember anything that the man said. So after much reflection, what I thought I would do is think about some of the things that I've learned over the years, things that I wish someone had shared with me at my graduation. And I came up with six things. So the first one is this. I wish someone at my commencement had told me to live my life more like a dog's. Live my life more like a dog. And that may sound kind of funny, but if you have a dog, or you know someone who has a dog, or you know a dog, you know that dogs like to live in the moment. They live in the moment. And if you don't believe it, ask them if they want to go for a ride in the car. They will bust a hip to get to the back door, and then roll the window down while you're driving, and the head goes out, they are totally oblivious to what might hit them in the nose. You know? They live in the moment. And the other thing I love about dogs is when they're not living in the moment, they take a nap. They take a nap until the next moment comes along, and at least in our house, that's usually when a stranger comes in. And they're up and they're running around and they're grabbing a toy or they're getting a nasty old ratty tennis ball and they want you to play. And that becomes your chance to live in the moment. Because at our house, that dog will drop that ball right at your feet and do you pick it up because you have no idea where that ball has been. And that's why I wish someone had told me at my commencement to live my life more like a dog, pick up the ball, live in the moment. The second thing I wish someone had told me at my graduation is to read more books. And that may strike you as very funny, <clears throat> given that that's what you've been doing for the last four or five or six years, as Dr. Wyatt says. But in particular, I wish someone had told me to read more history books. We live in a crazy, crazy world today. But what I've learned that in the last 40 years, history indeed does repeat itself. And if not exactly in nature, I think Mark Twain probably had it right when he said at least history rhymes with itself. One thing that I've come to believe that what's happening today has happened before and it's probably going to happen again. And the very best way for us to deal with today and lean into tomorrow is to study yesterday. And that's why I wish someone had suggested at my commencement that I read more books. The third thing I wish someone had said at my commencement is to never stop being curious. 
As I said, I went to a college very much like Coker. We were deeply rooted in the liberal arts. And we learned to think, and we learned to question, and we learned to discuss, and to wonder, and to be divergent in our thought. And then I went to business school. And I learned that everything fits in a formula or a financial statement. An A plus B always equals, equals C. And there couldn't have been a greater contrast in thought. But I've become a promoter of curiosity because I think that curiosity is where change begins. It's where creativity begins. We live in a technological world today, but I would contend that curiosity gave rise to technology. Technology does not give rise to curiosity. I mean, think about it. Do you think there was some guy sat around and said, I think today I'll make a microwave? Probably not. But there was probably someone who said, how do I use the technology that I have, and can I heat a cup of water with it, or cook a meal in a minute, or some other similar convenience? In my lifetime, I've witnessed the color TV, the personal computer, the internet, the mobile phone. They're all incredible, life-changing technologies. But it wasn't until one man became curious to see if there was some way to create a device that would fit in his pocket and allow him to play and listen to his favorite music, his 10,000 songs. And Steve Jobs gave us the iPod. Now, if you fast forward today, we have a device that rose out of his curiosity that has literally changed the world, and that's a smartphone. Our world has gone mobile in real time from one man's curiosity. That's why I wish someone at my commencement had said to me, always be curious. The fourth thing that I wish someone had told me at my commencement is that life isn't fair, because it's not. Without question, everybody in this room has found ourselves faced with some situation where we say to ourselves, well, that isn't fair. And if it hasn't happened, it will. And you'll be faced with this reflection point. Do you face it and deal with it, or do you quit? And what I wish someone had said to me is that life won't always be fair, and that I should look for the detour See, by definition, a detour will eventually get you where you want to go, but it requires you to take a different route. And life will challenge you in some way, and it's important that you look for the detour. Because what I've also learned is the detour can be a new adventure. It's a different way to go, with new things to see, new people to meet, and new things to learn. And that's why I wish someone at my commencement had told me that life isn't always fair and look for the detour. So we're down to my last two things, and I think these may be the most important. The fifth thing that I wish someone had told me at my graduation is to care as much about doing good things for others as I care about my own achievement. Care as much about doing good things for others as I care about my own achievement. I've come to believe that the greater good can only be achieved by doing the greater good. I believe that to be true. There's a 17th century French philosopher and mathematician, Pasquale, who opined on this notion. And I'll paraphrase him, but he contends that all of us are born with a hole in us that only doing good can fill. And I believe this to be true, too. So I would urge you to find your cause, find your passion, find your reason to give to others, and then make it an equal part of your life plan. Make it part of your day, make it part of who you are. Fill the hole and make yourself complete. And I wish someone had told me this when I graduated from college. The final thing I wish someone had told me at my commencement is know who I am. Know who I am. Life is going to throw you those detours that I mentioned earlier. You are going to have ample opportunities to lose your bearings. But if you know who you are, 
you can't drift too far off course. My good friend, Dr. Steve Rodgers, who's a noted thinker in this area, contends that it doesn't require some metaphysical experience to know who you are. He contends it's as simple as being thoughtful when you complete this sentence, I am, I am. I am Walt George. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, I'm a son, I'm a brother, and I'm a cousin. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a philanthropist, I'm a gentle man, I'm a kind man, I'm an honest man. I'm a man of faith, and I'm a friend. That's who I am. That's my true north. That's the way I roll. And nothing can make me lose my bearings from what I declare to be true about me. So I encourage all of you, find some quiet time and complete your sentence. I am. And then over the years, come visit it periodically. Ensure you are who you want to be. And here's why. Because when you are sure you know and you declare it to be so, no amount of high wind can blow you off course and no detour will take you in a direction you don't want to travel. And I wish someone had told me this when I graduated from college. Well, those are the six things that I came up with that I wish I had learned at my commencement. And it's my hope that one or two may somehow connect for you. So let's get on with the important things this morning, and that's graduation. Today, you become a graduate of Coker. You are now part of the Coker legacy. Always remember that we're here for you, and this is your home. Congratulations, we're very proud of you.